Let's talk about this Debbie somewhat downer of an article uh, or topic, I guess, about Fox and their displeasure or Disney's displeasure with Fox and their performance in the first quarter of this of this new year. So they had a <sighs> they had a stockholders meeting, and you know all these these meetings are usually you can listen to them live on the internet. But I guess Bob Iger went on, and all he said was the Fox Studio performance was well below where it had been uh, well below we had hoped it would have been when we made the acquisition. So basically, hugely underperformed. The only movie that made a profit for Fox, uh, 20th Century Fox Films, was uh, Breakthrough, which was made on a $14 million budget and earned about $50 million. <coughs> Everything else, Stuber. What was Breakthrough? I don't uh, know what that movie is. Breakthrough was a movie with Chrissy Metz and... Oh, God. There was a few other actors, the well-known <laughs> actors that were in there. What's it about? But her son, what was that? Where did Emily go? Her she son gets, scared. like, in an accident, uh -huh. and he, like, dies. Okay. But then, like, after a certain amount of time, he, like, comes back or something. Oh, huh? I think I saw some. What's the huh? movie Breakthrough about? That Breakthrough? Chrissy Metz, yeah. This is us. Christian film. Oh. Oh. Yeah, he like died but came back to oh, life. Oh, I saw that trailer. Oh, yeah. I saw that trailer. Oh. Who was the other? Okay. Okay. Oh, it was Mike Coulter. <laughs> Mike Coulter was in it. He was Mike a fireman. Coulter was in it. Yeah, he was oh, a fireman. No. Mike yeah. Cage? Luke Cage yeah. was in it, dude. Oh, that's what happens. Yeah. He drops like in like he was on a sheet of ice, like on a lake or something. Yes, yes. And he yes. like I saw drops the trailer in. For yeah, and that. I think it made me cry. Yeah, yeah. He's legally, and then dead. Mike Coulter saves him. Yeah. Yeah. So that was okay. the most profitable movie at 20th Century Fox in 2019. Damn, homie. Uh, Stuber oh. underperformed The Art of Racing, the Mile of Intimelia movie yeah. with Did Kevin Costner narrating already? a dog. Underperformed, that yeah. It opens like $8 million. Yeah. And Yo, I Dark read Phoenix, that book like hugely. 10 years ago, The Art of Racing in the Rain, and, and um, Patrick Dempsey had been trying to make that movie for a long oh, time really? because he's a race car enthusiast and oh. it's about race car driving. Is he a producer on it at least? Yeah, I think he's a producer on oh, it. He okay. was originally going to star in it. Anyway, um, I'm kind of curious about that movie just because I read My the book My mom saw it. She said it was very good. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Okay. I don't know if it's just a mom I can, movie, I can but just, I can just spoil it right now. I can just spoil the story. Kevin to make Costner it like, turns into a human being. He turns into a human being, kinda. <laughs> Wait, what? No, they all turn into the the characters from Cars. The, the, the plot is I'm gonna I'm about to ruin <laughs> I'm about to ruin the movie uh, uh, The Art of Racing in the Rain. Spoiler alert! No, I'm gonna spoil it. I don't Major care. spoiler alert! Uh, this is this is really funny. So it's about a guy who is played, I guess, by Milo Milo, Milo yeah. Ventimiglia in the film. He's a race car driver, mm -hmm. not like NASCAR, not like Indy car racing. Were fun. But like he is a race car driver of I think stock car racing yeah. or something and and he's like a race car enthusiast. Mm -hmm. He the whole story is that he like falls in love with somebody, gets a puppy yep. and the and the story is from the perspective of the dog mm -hmm. and they name the dog Enzo. Yep. And after like a famous Ferrari. race car driver, yeah. Yeah. Uh, right? Mm -hmm. Enzo Ferrari. Mm -hmm. So um they the whole story it's just like um Marley and me. Like you follow yeah. their oh, relationships, gotcha. the ups and downs, gotcha. like they lose family members, whatever, whatever, but the dog keeps getting older, they have a kid until the Who's point voiced where by Kevin Costner. Yeah, Ooh. the dog is narrating. Okay. Until the point where the dog <coughs> passes away. Mm -hmm. And it's really sad. And at that point they have like they're happily married, they have a house and they have a kid or two. Mm -hmm. And the whole kind of time is like it's not like like Milo Ventimiglia's character like wanted to be a professional race car driver and that didn't work out so like he was kind of been struggling with that. Long story short, Kevin cut Coster's to the kid. at the end, yeah, just Kevin Costner <laughs> dead people. No, just like they just deep fake him onto a child. No, no, no. Uh, at the end of the story, it's like years later and um uh and the the guy and the, his dog bonded because he would take the dog racing yeah and mm -hmm. the dog loved it mm -hmm. and and they, they kind of bonded over that or they you know it's your dog like it loves you and you love the dog and at the end of the story he somehow becomes um he work, works at like a race car company or something mm -hmm. like something happens to where he is involved in the world of racing professionally but mm -hmm. he's not like a race car driver or mm -hmm. maybe he is anyway at the very end of the story t like 10 years later or something He's in Italy, like racing or something. And then like a woman and her little kid come up and she's like, oh, my son, he's such a big fan of your race and you're such a good race car driver. My son wants to say hi. Son, he's, so he Mario say, came over. Say, my son is Luigi. Say, oh, my son, he wanted to say hi. My son, my son is Luigi. He brought you a pizza slice. No, and then she, no, she goes, like, my son, he please, he love you so much. Please say something to my son. And he's like, yeah, sure. Come, what's uh -huh. his name? And she goes, Enzo. Enzo. And so uh -huh. the idea is like the dog was like reincarnated and an Italian boy. boy. <laughs> like around so the world. So he stole, kidnapped yeah. the kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's strapped 
grabbed him to He's his like, back. That's my son. And That's went, yeah. went uh, Arrivederci. My son, he used to be a dog. Please, he <laughs> want to say hi to he you. He reincarnated. He used yes, to be a dog. Uh, my he son, used to be Golden boy. Retriever. Now uh, he's Dominic the Coco. Uh, uh, how you say reincarnated from dog? Uh, my son, he I don't loves know, uh, your ass. He likes the kibbles he, and beats. He remembers, he remembers your house. He remembers the smell he only he of your pure, garbage American He, he only eats Purina. You see, I cannot feed him nothing <laughs> the puppy else. Chow. The puppy only puppy chow. <laughs> we thought it was Italian. It's actually my not. Son, my son is very sick. He's please. a big fan. Please. You tell him that he's a boy, not a dog. <laughs> you make him some pasta, please. some puppy chow. It's very embarrassing, it's actually. Very embarrassing, he poops please. out on the grass. It's my son, Enzo. Little kibbles and beats, we call <laughs> them. Enzo, you know how to, to speak. I teach you. <laughs> <laughs> Enzo, per che you do this to Enzo, me? Enzo, you're hey, not a cabron. dog. You're not a dog. You're a little boy human. <laughs> please, tell my son, please. He loves you. He have a poster on your and wall. And then you, you see Zer Milan and... Yeah. <laughs> I love how you slowly drifted into Sofia Vergara. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> slowly. I'm I love like, it. are we going I into Chef? <laughs> I, need I love Jesus. it. To all of our Italian viewers, uh, I apologize. Uh, that Jeez. was kind Sincerely. of borderline racist. I'm I love, I'm, I'm I love Italy. I'm going to Italy next yeah. summer. I want to so go so bad. I want to go so bad. Guys, we should all go. I want to go. Should, mm-hmm. We should take another trip, another group trip. Italy trip. Once Italy three. trip. Italia! Italia. I want to go so bad. I forgot the... Farts we were talking about. Uh, oh, oh the, this, so this, look, Fox, Disney, here's the thing. this whole thing. This is this is a big bummer story for me for a bunch of reasons. This is a big bummer <laughs> hold story. Hold on, hold on I need okay. please to tell me more. I need to, <laughs> what? I need to get my mind out of Italian yeah. mode. And okay, <laughs> what I've, else do you okay. have for we, me? We were talking about this before, yes, Adam. Yeah. Like, okay, I thought that the news coming out of this was like, oh, Disney canceled a bunch of projects, right? Yeah. But apparently, it's like everything Fox. Like everything that was in development, including original and like adapted stuff. Hundreds of projects, yeah. but like fifty million dollars like worth. Fifty million dollars <laughs> worth of projects that were like in pre-production mm-hmm. or some form of you development. Know, and yeah. I know that was Mouse Guard one of them, or is that a different company? I don't know. Lumberjanes was one Lumberjanes of them. Was Lumberjanes one of them, yeah. doing a live-action Lumberjanes mm-hmm. movie. Mm-hmm. Lumberjanes based off of the comic book, which mm-hmm. is fantastic. That bummed me out. Uh, a couple of these did bum me out, but I have to say. A lot of the news is was coming out. This is my main point I want to come across mm-hmm. with. A lot of the news that, were, that was coming out, a lot of the, the quick sort of headlines I saw on Twitter, people were upset, but, yep. I, but then they were kind of defending some of the major projects that were being mentioned. And I'm like, yeah, but are you defending this because you actually care about like creativity and, and art and stuff? No. Or are you defending it because no. you're kind of being anti-Disney right now? Which I get right. being anti-Disney. That's very valid to be anti-huge right. corporation that's making big sweeping things like this. Right. But I saw people going like, oh man, a lot of jobs could have been... But but um, And I'm like, yeah, sure. A lot of people could have been hired to work on these movies. But these movies were like a Sandlot prequel and a Die Hard, <laughs> Play, uh, yeah, a die yeah. hard prequel. Yeah, who right, wants and, that? And Assassin's Creed 2. Like... Are you really rooting for those movies to get made, or are you just commenting on the scariness of a one fell swoop, right. you know, yeah. things right. being canceled? Right. Mm-hmm. I get that. What I don't get at is I don't get doing the full sweep. I understand looking at it project by project and going, because right. I, I don't think like, you know, I, I think obviously risky stuff. The, the movie Jojo Rabbit is included in this conversation mm-hmm. for a different reason, and that's really infuriating, that whole piece of the story. But yeah. movies like that should absolutely be looked at as like, we should make this. Or we've already made but it. Assassin's Let's Creed keep Two. It. I'm yeah. like, I'm like, I don't care about Assassin's Creed. I don't care like, about John McClane prequel. Yeah, uh, that seems that seems creatively right. not good. Yeah. So right. I don't want it to defend those kinds of projects. And and I've said this before, and it's crappy because 20th Century Fox had the rights to the X Men and Fantastic Four, mm-hmm. and if they came out with an X Men movie that didn't do well. <laughs> They would have to, they, they could, if let's say the merger never happened and they're like, well, I guess the next X-Men movie's canceled and, and people would go, man, they could have, they could have hired a lot of people with that job. But I'm going, yeah, but shouldn't the writers and producers of that movie that failed because it was bad, shouldn't they like be punished effectively by shouldn't, not getting work? Exactly. Like that's like, I understand like, oh, a whole crew was banking on this franchise to come in right. and I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But these people over here creatively, they right. screwed up this last installment. Right. Right. Y'all right. screwed up. So shouldn't that, you know, so mm-hmm. again, if part of this is, hey, Fox isn't where it should be, then I, I don't know enough about the situation truly to really just be like, here's my opinion and I think that that's all there is. Because there's a bunch of stuff, a bunch of factors at play. We just spent a minute riffing on the art of racing in the rain. But like, but the legitimate question is, yeah. why did that movie underperform? Exactly. Was it the advertising? Right. Was right. it timing? Was it right. a bunch of different stuff that I don't know enough about of all the different variables? Right. Uh, but if a movie comes out and it's from a certain creative team and it's bad, mm-hmm. I don't want to see that 
person like get a uh, work like that again right. do you know what i'm saying and right. there's some examples in here of like this movie was gonna get canceled directed by this person and i was like good because i don't think that they're a good Nobody director like, watch that. it's yeah, crappy yeah. but i'm mm-hmm. like yeah. okay yeah again cruise that sucks right. the groups right. of people were counting on this yeah. again but again 20th Century Fox, you just mentioned Sony earlier with Venom 2. It's mm-hmm. like, we're it just Sony as a studio, we're like, uh, we're kind of iffy on that. It's like, yeah. that's crazy. It, sh- it, should, it should not be that way. Right, right. <clears throat> and for whatever reason, we consider, even though Disney fails all the time, they do a bunch of you know stuff that fails all the time, we yeah. still will see the Disney brand and be like, well, the stuff that they're handling, like they're tr- they're taking care of it. Like, right. it's all right. good. Yeah. If, they're, if, if they announce tomorrow, Indiana Jones 5, and they did, right? That's yeah, it's happening. Yeah, come on two years Disney, or Indiana Jones 5 from Disney in two years. I'm like, yeah, it'll probably yeah. be good. Like, yeah. <laughs> sure. It'll it probably be right. some money. It at least you know? won't be a dumpster right. fire. I mean, even when you look you at know? movies like The Lion King and Aladdin, like those have all broken a billion dollars. And yeah. It's nuts. Regardless of how you kind of feel about them, like I'm not that crazy about them. Sure. No. But no, they made all, enough are, money to justify right. their existence exactly. and to justify like, exactly. you know, yeah. those maybe are, sequels. Those are, that's a, yeah, because they were saying maybe they're going to do Aladdin, Aladdin 2. Aladdin 2, yeah. Which like, okay, Aladdin 1, I didn't go see it. I went to go see Lion King, mm-hmm. coupled with Jungle Book, coupled with all the live action remakes. That conversation is, I think that's creatively bankrupt as well. Right. But at some point, that's going to end and it's like, stopped. okay, now what? Right. But right. if you're telling me they're going to do Aladdin 2, I'm like, okay, now that's kind of interesting. Interested. I'm kind of interested yeah, in that. Yeah, like, right? what's the new thing you want? It won't is. just be Return of Jafar because Return of Jafar sucks. It, that's yeah. a yeah. bad. <laughs> it's going to be King of Thieves for sure. If anything. Was, yeah. If anything. But if anyway, anything. that's all I wanted to say is like, yeah. Is like I don't. I saw a lot of people defending like, oh man, mm-hmm. it sucks. All these movies got canceled, yeah. and I'm like, you really care about Assassin's Creed two, dog? Yeah. I don't no, think no, so. No. But there's still a <laughs> bunch of stuff to criticize Disney right. about well, in this discussion. And I think also a lot of people talked about you know the idea that yes, a lot of people are going to lose their jobs. And someone in the article, it was some like insider or some other someone from another studio was saying, regardless of of how these movies would have done, because of the constant poor performance of the studio, they are like the last ranked studio out of all the big ones. Damn. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. This studio would have been sold no matter what. Right. Because really? you're just like you're putting money into something that's not making a profit. Right. At some point, you have to cut your losses wow. and get rid of it. Like that's just <laughs> business. Period. Yeah. So oh, if it man. wouldn't have been Disney, it would have been somebody, somebody else. Somebody else. Right. At at least, and like it sucks to say, but at least with Disney, they have so much momentum, so much money, yeah. and so much power that they, if they chose to do it, they could Correct. empower 20th ship. Century Fox yeah. to make good projects. Right. Right. Yeah. Because I, I feel like that they do have a lot of creative people who work at Disney, whether they're under Lucasfilm, Marvel, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Disney mm-hmm. proper, now Disney Plus, and all mm-hmm. this stuff, yeah. where they have opportunities where they could now, and like some of the stuff, uh, has been paused, like stuff that was being worked on. Mm-hmm. Some of it has just outright been canceled. Some of it has been paused. Mm-hmm. So maybe there's potential for some potentiality for some of those projects to come back as like lower budgeted projects, Disney Plus projects, okay. maybe some movies. Yeah. I didn't even see this here, but yeah. this is what we're talking about. Mm-hmm. The third bullet point mm-hmm. here is Top Lieutenant yeah. Horn, who is it, Alan, Alan Horn, Horn yeah. and Bergman. I forget Bergman's first name. Would be tasked with, quote, redefining 20th Century mm-hmm. Fox's film strategy for the future, applying the same discipline and creative standards yeah. behind the successes of <laughs> oh. Disney, Pixar, Marvel. Yeah. So movies. there it is. Like, They're that's steering a, that's the a, ship. That's a burn, but it's also like, yeah. There's that's creative well, so standards, like we have a, you know. Like, we have a friend who works at Disney, uh-huh. and the one thing that he says, he's like, I get all the opinions about Disney, but that is one oil, well-oiled machine. Right, homie. They are right. organized. Yes. They are, like, precise. Just go to Disneyland. Yeah. <laughs> Never a speck of trash on the ground. You walk in there, and you feel the magic because they want you to feel yeah. the magic. Like, yeah. every, th- every move they make is on purpose yeah. and very calculated. Yeah. You know I, what I, I don't like is it says here that it, a bunch of stuff has been axed mm-hmm. in favor of reboots of beloved Fox yes. library titles like Home it's Alone. It's the thing we're talking about playing it safe. You know, right. yeah, like right. I'm Absolutely. like, I don't, Home Alone, I don't, Cheaper by the Dozen, Diary of a Wimpy Kid, I don't care about Night that at the stuff. Museum. I don't care about that I don't, stuff. They're taking I don't think, all those properties and they're rebooting them in some way for Disney+. Plus. I don't think anybody really, really cares about that stuff. Yeah. What I'm thinking is that they want the label recognition. Mm-hmm. That, they want yeah. the label and recognition they, behind look, the nostalgia. that stuff is going to be for kids. Right, right, exactly. Kids will watch But that. what they want is to start assimilating the 20th Century Fox name with Disney. Yeah. And if it's going to take the nostalgia factor, they're going to they're going to bring they're going to go to the the way that is going look, to make them. We love things like Home Alone Night at the Museum. Um, yeah, like why yeah. would if you're our age and you have kids already, yeah. why right. would you not share that with your right, kids? Right, exactly. You know? Yeah, why would you not? Well, like why would you not know that this is a uh, this is a thing 
that I can have my kids watch and not worry yeah. about it. Mm-hmm. Um, this meeting seems weird to me, though, because it's like Disney's like, oh, it's underperforming. It's like going to a car dealership. The, the car dealer's like, this piece of shit car right here <laughs> breaks down on the freeway Pretty much. all the time. And, and Disney's like, oh, I won't oh, buy that. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. not going to break down on me. <laughs> yeah. And then they're stuck on the freeway. They're like, fuck, my car broke down. It's like, okay, cool. He just told you whatever that guy's yeah. name who sold Fox. Like, like, the, the, the Murdochs. The, yeah, the Murdoch. The Murdoch fucking told you, dude. The this shit's going to break down guy. on you on the freeway. Oh, it's not going to break down on me. Yeah. <laughs> that yeah. guy. I'm Bob Iger. Yeah, I'm Bob Iger. It won't break down. How dare that car break the down on me? The audacity of that man. Audacity. Oh, it's not going to break, it's not gonna break down on me. Yeah, you he's know. He's out there with a sign, son of a bitch. Yeah, exactly. So, and then he's stuck on the freeway. It's like, yes, you definitely knew what you were getting into. I don't think that this meeting was a surprise to anybody who was yeah. in well, it's a shareholder's call so exactly yeah. so what i'm what i'm thinking that this is they're giving us this information in this way but at the same time they are preparing us because exactly there they ha- there has they're to be grease in those wheels they grease the wheels they're letting us know that hey guys uh we're not gonna let fox do the thing that it was doing before like right. and this is the way we have to present this information <clears throat> to you because we can't just outright say uh fox is no longer doing this right. we're gonna do the disney way like they have to soften it up for mm-hmm. people yeah um and whatever that implies uh whatever they decided on in this meeting is a way to present that information to people without shocking them yeah especially because there might be sho- there might be holders who are just like oh, well, I don't know what to do now or mm-hmm. like very confused by this situation. So I think you have to look at it more on the business side rather oh, than like 100%. You the movie goer side. You have you to know? look yeah. at it uh, from a strategic standpoint, not an right. emotional standpoint because when emotion gets involved, you want to have all these thoughts, right. but it's like, well, business exactly. sense wise, you got to look and understand it's a, how much? $40 billion yeah. acquisition yeah, or something? something like that. And you got to look at like, okay, yeah. what's the strategy? Right. How do we get out of this rut? Right. Because even though the film studio is not do necessarily performing well fx and like the tv stuff that they acquired yeah. all that shit's sure. doing great sure so it's they're still getting something really good out of it but of course they want the movie stuff to perform really well right. and going forward you know it's like you know like you were saying it's re-strategizing how do we do it how do we do right. li- they're going to limit how many movies from fox right. are going to exactly. come out every year they'll probably exactly. limit the budgets right in terms of like <coughs> stuff like new mutants they right. were saying that they are not necessarily too happy with how that's exactly. looking so going into the new year that sounds right. like they're probably potentially going to do some new reshoots right. does that right. mean that that show could end up on hulu or yeah. that project could end up on hulu as an original movie right i kind of feel like it's looking more and more likely because yeah. of the fact that they just don't feel like it's going to perform absolutely when it came to dark phoenix and some of these other movies once disney absorbed fox they didn't really pump a ton into the marketing because they weren't fully confident in the projects and now x-men you know deadpool all this fox stuff that's been absorbed by disney is now under the hands of kevin feige right which they have full confidence yeah, in that right. he'll be able to turn it exactly. around and do something good yeah. with it. Yeah. At the same time, they're trying to figure out ways, well, like, what do we do with Deadpool? Do we make Deadpool his own standalone yes. R-rated character where he can be vulgar and all right. this sort of stuff, be a Fox thing? And, but then at the same time, how do we integrate him into the Marvel Cinematic Universe, mm-hmm. a PG-13 mm-hmm. world, where he can still work without losing the essence of what he is? Right. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, yeah. I, I think that in itself is going to be a challenge. Absolutely. That, that This is such a multifaceted uh, uh, issue that we have to look at because it's as much as we are emotionally invested into these movies, yeah. Yeah. we have to think about the Disney brand and how that shit is unwavering. Yeah. Like, there's no confusion in what Disney is. Their right. mission statement is clear. Right. Like, they are they are not going to have anybody risk. No. Just putting like a tarnishing dirty mark, them. tarnishing. I that mean, they even brand. talked about in the article. They talked about how they're like they're not a tar- they're like they're not a company who accepts like yeah. failing projects. No, they they absolutely success don't. Only. Like, it's it's only success if there's anybody who knows how to turn things around. It's it's definitely Disney. So I think this is just a way of mentally preparing people that like change is coming. Like it's it's mm-hmm. going to change yeah. the Fox name. It's going to be overlooked by the mouse. Like, at the end of the day, it's going to be Fox, but Mickey Mouse is going to have his eyes on that shit. Yeah. He's going to put his gloves oh, all over that oh, shit. Oh, yeah, exactly. He's like, so, that's not right. He's going to be flicking yeah. people off because it's not going to work. So, are fired. Right. Here's a question about sure. Deadpool real quick. Yeah. Uh, see if you guys can help me figure this out. And I think this is a conversation that will bleed over into Blade at some point. <sighs> yeah. Ooh, well, no. Different because, well, 
Actually, I guess same thing. Sure. Same thing. Maybe. Yeah. Same thing. The question I'm asking is you have a rated R character, Deadpool Blade, right? Mm-hmm. I think we all agree as fans who are happen to be adults and who have already enjoyed these characters or characters like this before in R-rated movies that they should have an R-rated presence. I think that there would be no better R-rated movie to come out of Marvel Studios first than Deadpool. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Deadpool kills the Marvel Universe mm-hmm. or Deadpool versus the Marvel Universe or Deadpool versus the Avengers or yeah. whatever they call it. And then – or if it's Blade – uh, the perfect R-rated, first R-rated movie for them to do right. would be Blade. Mm-hmm. Right. My question is, I think we're all in agreement that that can work. That should work. And it would be so great to see those characters in an R-rated story set in the MCU. That shouldn't be a... Pro- they can just... You know, I don't think that... I don't see parents getting upset if they market it correctly. Right. If they make sure to tell everybody no. Like, yeah. hey, this is not for everybody. This is for right. the grown-ups in the room. Right. And everybody else has Black Panther, Captain Marvel, Doctor right. Strange. Each other 25 literally, projects. Yeah, exactly. Everybody else. Exactly. And that could be really cool and fun. And it could it could give them a lot of credit to the creativity that they, mm, that they right. have over there. Right. My question is, do we want to see Deadpool, Blade, whoever else? To an extent, Punisher, John Bernthal, yeah, Punisher, yeah. maybe Daredevil. Do we want to see these characters in a PG-13 Avengers crossover team up movie and if so how does that work and if so if they're in that movie does that mean that deadpool gets an action figure or a stuff stuffed toy or whatever to be in the disney store sure right and it's like like next to spider-man and next to and if that's the case then then will the kid go oh okay yeah he's in the avengers movie then i want to watch his own movie and it's rated r and then they put it on and there's profanity and a parent goes come on disney i didn't know i guess we'll just give them deadpool too (laughs) <laughs> the PG-13 cut? I don't know. Uh, yeah. Once Upon a Deadpool yeah. or whatever. It's, I, I understand it's what you're saying like, now. It, like, it, it to is, me, it is it, tricky. that should be easy because right. I'm used to it because I read Marvel comics and yeah. that happens in comic books yeah. every day. But like, it's you different. Know, yeah, does, that, different. Does, does that just well, mean that, that Disney pumps more into like marketing to ma- make sure that people know that like so parents can't be mad? Yeah. I don't know. Well, I mean, that has a lot to do with Parents it. Parents are always going to be mad. So we <laughs> all, already were. I mean, the they are, yeah, they already are mad yeah. with that stuff. So I feel like Deadpool will definitely work because I feel like they can play around with that fourth wall aspect of it. Like him trying to curse and like, and like mother yeah. farter. And, but instead of that, yeah. or like he cusses, but instead of like the word coming out, uh-huh. it's, it's that. It's that noise. I was, I, I knew you were going to come through with that. <laughs> it's just like a little Mickey Mouse. Uh-huh. And then he gets mad. He's like, what the? Uh-huh. And like, he's really mad because be he can't amazing. curse, you know? Like, And then all the, yeah. all the other characters are like, man, this guy swears yeah. so much. They're, yeah, yeah, exactly. Because they're hearing it, but we yeah. can't hear it. Yeah. And so they could play around with things like that. So I feel like Deadpool would be the perfect entry mm, okay. to get people kind of used to that. That, uh, that silliness, that edginess that yeah. they could play with. Because, yeah. I mean, Disney can run into some edgy stuff. I mean, like, Marvel has definitely pushed the boundaries with language when it's come to the movies. Well, just like in Endgame. I, yeah, and I, f- I feel like as we've f- the further we've gone down the Marvel Cinematic Universe rabbit hole, the, the, the more they try to push that a little bit. They loosen the, the yeah. strings a little bit. Yeah, and then bit. you look at movies like The Dark Knight, which that's yeah. a PG-13 movie, and that right. movie is pretty friggin' right. that's intense. A, that's a soft exactly. R. That's a soft yeah. That's a, uh, right. Yeah. You're, you're right. It really but, is. But so that's, it's like, could you do that with Deadpool and still yeah. get away yes. with a lot of what I think, he does? I think you, know? you could. I think you really could because as much... As much profanity as Deadpool is, there's also that much comedy on mm. his side. Ryan Reynolds yeah. is a comedian, yeah. you know, and so he but could would lean... it work without the profanity. Would well, the comedy so work without the there profanity? are there are some like okay, so when in the last I didn't scene, see the PG thirteen cut, so I don't know. I didn't yeah. see it either, but like in, in no, the last scene where um where he's fighting Ajax in, in Deadpool one, yeah. where all the all the cartoons start coming out mm. and stuff like that, like that's very kid friendly. Yeah, some of the cartoons are inappropriate, course, yeah. but you don't like the the cartoons being inappropriate wasn't key to that scene. Right. It was right. just the fact that he was kind of hallucinating, mm-hmm. you know. So you could do things like that, and maybe even get a little bit smarter writing when it comes to Deadpool, sure. because Without you have to, to work around on, yeah. that crutch yeah. of cursing, or work it into like some creative way where mm-hmm. like he's trying to curse but he can't uh-huh. because he's because be- mm-hmm. he's being censored and he's reacting to that. So there's I think there's there's a lot of potential to do there where. Blade is a super serious character yeah. who wouldn't take that shit, you know? Like, yeah, and, yeah. Like, <clears throat> when you, and when you start exploring the idea of doing these more like adult R-rated characters, do you still do it Marvel Studios? Do you do it Fox Marvel Studios? That's, do you do I it say, Fox that's Marvel Knights? Do you that's remember when one. the trailer for Doctor Strange came out? Uh-huh. 2016 Doctor yeah, Strange? Yeah, the teaser or just it, Either whatever. one. I forget the first one, yeah. but like the Marvel Studios logo came up and then it turned black. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just do that. 
Oh, there you just go. Just have it Marvel Studios, but not the, but like a different logo. Yeah. yeah. Instead of the no, change, the, color, fanfare. change the, yeah. the color scheme. Not the not yeah. the Marvel Studios fanfare, mm-hmm. but change the color color scheme. Make it dark. Almost yeah. Yeah. maybe even change it to look like Marvel Knights. Yeah. yeah. Like yeah. the or Marvel Max. Or like yeah. or like or you give it like like these like metallic okay, silver great. letters that cool. have like look like fangs or something. Yeah, you just know, some a little bit more aggressive. Yeah. Like let people know that this is going to be a darker mm-hmm. tone movie yeah. or mm-hmm. it's going to be more on the adult side. Yeah. But you I what you presented is a little bit tricky because what do you do? Like yeah. is is it creating a new label? Is it right. strictly putting it on Fox yeah. where where they could easily say, "Oh no, that was Fox guys. Don't yeah. worry about that one." Well, cuz then sure, you also so. have to look at stuff like, "Okay, Avatar, is Avatar just going to be a Fox movie, a Disney movie, but right. then they also yeah. have properties. I mean, they do have things like Die Hard, Alien, right. Predator, Simpsons. Yeah, yeah. well, Simpsons yeah. will go on Disney Plus. But I'm saying that still, it will always feel like a Fox. Yeah, yeah, for sure, I mean? for sure, for sure. I don't know. It'll but then, like, yeah, but like, how do you thing. how do you do Alien and Predator without having a Fox label? Like, you right. can't. Okay, right. yeah, They'll exactly. never make it a Disney movie. Right, right. exactly. Because there's a certain there's a certain th- emotional connection that you have yeah. between that logo yeah. and that Could movie not coming do out. do Predator and Alien as like PG movies. Was right, it, exactly. Yeah. Like, yeah, come yeah, on. Exactly. Yeah. But that, I, I feel like for movies like that, it's a little bit more cut and dry. Yeah. Where like you could definitely right. do that on the when Fox When it's like superheroes logo, that are integrated into sure. one universe that's owned by one company, it's I, like, I will say yeah. though, Ooh, how listen, yeah. I will say though that in, in uh, the year of our Lord, 2019, uh, if Avengers Endgame, you know, uh, breakthrough. If <laughs> Avengers Endgame can come out, and it's the twenty third movie mm-hmm. uh-huh. in a franchise that is now expecting the audience yeah. to know it's the twenty third movie yeah, in a franchise. Right. You know what we're doing you, here. You know what we're doing. You use right. Wikipedia right. just like we do. You can look up which ones yeah, you've seen and which ones exactly. you haven't. You know that when we go to Asgard twenty thirteen, that movie was Thor: The Dark World. Yeah. Like we're, yeah. you know, if they're putting that much responsibility on the viewer to be that caught up, mm-hmm. and now to be caught up with Disney Plus shows and to be bouncing back and forth, mm-hmm. and some aspect of Marvel will also ask you to be caught up with the ABC Marvel shows mm-hmm. and the right, Netflix right, right. shows. <clears throat> how much more is it to be expect an audience to know the rating? Right. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. How, is yeah. it irre- yeah. at that point? Yeah. Is it is it like is it irresponsible is it or is it it's not? If it's that it's big of a worry, especially with a movie Disney like Deadpool, because Deadpool was already so has huge. already yeah. has the recognition. Yeah. The kind recognition, of the same yeah. with Blade. Yeah. And if they, you know, if they come out in the same way that they definitely made it clear to everybody on Earth, hey, we got Spider Man back. Yeah. Spider Man's home in, in the Marvel world, right. and he's mm-hmm. going to be in Captain America: Civil right. War. It's like, hey, everybody, we're doing rated R, Blade. It's Blade. It's rated R. Yeah. He's home. He, or he's here at Marvel. Yeah. We're doing Blade. Like, but it's right. just one more thing to like market. One more yeah. thing mm-hmm. for for the directors, the producers, the writers, the actors to like promote in their right. lead yeah. up to the release of the movie. And just yeah. you know, and then if there's angry, if there's upset parents, what's going to happen? You're going to see some shit online. It's going to go yep. viral because a parent will be like, "I took my kid to Marvel and I didn't know." And we everybody's going to laugh at yeah. everybody's going to laugh at them. Right. Yeah. Right. Because it happened it, with yeah, Deadpool like, one. It happened with Deadpool one, yeah. and it'll happen again. Yeah. And that should not. Uh, make the corporate Disney scared to like lose out right, on some creative right. stuff that could get them because of ignorant parents. Yeah, correct. Which is what's yeah. so frustrating. We talked about you know Flash Gordon, Taika yeah. Waititi's Flash Gordon yeah. that got sidelined, that got canceled, yeah. and it's like, damn, there's Taika could do so much with that. Yeah. But then there's also yeah. Jojo Rabbit, the yes. new movie that he's got coming out under Fox Searchlight, right. and it like they had a screening, and some Disney exec was like, well, you know, it, like it might be just like it might be too edgy, too edgy, too right. edgy, and Stupid. it might Stupid. make people feel uncomfortable. Yeah. And it's not on brand with Disney. I'm like, yeah. well, no what shit, shit, dude. dude. It's, it's not a, a Disney it's movie. Not a it's Disney a Fox movie, no. Searchlight independent right. film. Yeah. You don't get someone like Taika to come in and make a movie and you're like, yeah. well, I guess this will be marketable. Yeah. He made Thor Ragnarok, like right. one of your right. best MCU movies. And right. You're bringing him made, back for another one. And he also made Boy, which was like right. a critically beloved like I mean, indie movie about, that he's made. about the New Zealand like Maori experience yeah. and like you know so it's like uh, yeah that that's a really infuriating part of the puzzle yeah, that yeah. makes me think like which I hope that was just one of those things where where <laughs> someone said that out loud yeah and you're like and everybody else was kind of like yeah we're not putting this as a Disney it, movie, they're like dude. did that guy pay attention yeah, yeah like, does this guy know. that that guy well, was plus, asleep the whole also, time also Disney used to own Miramax or sure. Touchstone. oh that's right yeah Touchstone yeah. Touch and Miramax. I think it was maybe Touch- both yeah. Yeah, um, Pulp Fiction. And yeah, like they've had movies like that come out under that label. So like, what are you worried about? I just, I, I, I feel it's like, weird. It's I weird. feel like it's probably just freak out for no reason. Probably. On, on, no, it's just money. On it's very just, specific yeah. people's 
they, radars. Like yeah. it's just it's yeah. not a really they huge. See, they see a deal. movie that's that's knocking it's Adolf Hitler. Brand. They see a movie that's knocking Adolf Hitler, and they're like, well, I don't want to. I don't want to upset white supremacists yeah. because they pay to see our movies. And it, right, they might have go see a, a lot in two. And, and right, we, need well, right that, we need that money from that demographic. Hey, it's you like, know no, what? No, no. How about be a couple million dollars Short. less wealthy? Yeah. And, 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 so and, and be able to and piss sleep off at some night. Nazis. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, You'll be fine. Uh, remember, remember when all the fanboys were going right. to boycott Captain Marvel? Yeah. <laughs> You'll be fine. Yeah. You'll be fine. How much? Over a billion? Yeah, you're okay. One bill. You're okay. God, they made five movies. All five of their movies have, or five. Yeah, Jesus, five billion dollars. Yeah. It's crazy. 